Welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, serial entrepreneur by night, seven-time best-selling author, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, and founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLC. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Miltoria Woodside. A little bit about her. Miltoria Woodside is the founder of Empowering Wives, www.empoweringwives.com. Empowering Wives was created so that Miltoria could effectively coach wives to be the wife and mother they were ordained to be. Her unique anointing enables her to operate in and give the wives kingdom keys and principles that will help them not only be a public success, but also a private success in their homes with their families. Meltoria is an author. Her most recent book is Healing and Deliverance, Deliverance for the Broken Wife. Mm-hmm. Meltoria Woodside, born and raised on the beautiful island of the Bahamas. She is happily married to Yakasa Woodside Sr. Together they have five sons. She's anointed to preach, teach, heal, and cast out devils. Meltoria has been mantled and commissioned by God to govern the family mountain to help wives fight for their marriage and family, restore hope to the hopeless, and give wives their roar back. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Meltoria Woodside. Woo-wee! Oh, my God. That intro to God be all the glory. <laughs> yes, I'm excited to have you at the table. Well, thank you for having me. It's a it's an honor and a pleasure. Awesome. So please tell us more about your entrepreneurial journey. Um, well, first of all, um my entrepreneurial journey started as a little girl. I was always on the you know, the chase to make that paper. <laughs> but you know, as a little girl I thought that um it was cool or it was nice to, you know, sell candy. And back in the Bahamas, we have this thing called cold cups, like icicle. So I was like, you know, we're going on a on a vacation. Let me get some candy together and sell to the kids so we can make money, you know, for our trip. But that spilled over into my adult life where I was always um, into businesses, you know, MLM. You know, and then my husband, you know, I married a man who had his family are just a family of entrepreneurs. So together, you know, we had that drive where we were not only looking where we could spend money, but we were looking how looking to how we can make money while others are trying to spend money. Nonetheless, um, where I am right now, where I am today, has been led by the Lord. Because he told me, first of all, to tell my story, to teach wives how to fight, and that when wives fight, families win. Um, Just about two years ago, almost two years ago, the Lord told me, Coach Coach Meltoria. And I have been coaching and counseling wives, you know, who were going through in their marriage, having difficulties in their marriage for quite a while. But I never saw it as an opportunity to say, you know, let me make some money. No, it was not that. It was the leading of the Holy Spirit um, because I believe in this time and in this season where we're in, you know, with so much marriages coming under attack, wives need someone who can give them wise counsel and direct them into becoming a private success as well as a public success. So that led me to be where I am right now with EmpoweringWives.com, coaching wives how to be the mother that they were ordained to be. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you're very passionate about coaching wives. Tell us more about that passion, right? You want to, you know, step out and help wives become better wives. So... What kind of inspired you to want to really, like, pursue that? Um, Well, first of all, you know, I myself, I am what many would call a victorious wife. Over 10 years ago, my marriage was faced with infidelity where 
I was basically fighting for my life. Um, I had the opportunity to give up, you know, divorce, run, but I wanted to fight for my marriage. When I made that decision, I did not have anyone to give me direction. I did not know what fighting for your marriage looked like. Um, I didn't have examples to say, well, give me hope. So it was a journey with myself and just crying out to the Lord and being led by Holy Spirit. Um, as a result of the success of that, you know, walking with the Lord, being led by the Lord, being led by faith and not by sight, now here it is, I am a victorious wife who have overcome challenges and trials in her marriage that people would deem dead, where people would say, you should have left or you should have given up. You don't deserve that. I decided to take the bull by its horn and cut off the head of the snake that was attacking my marriage. And my passion comes from what if many wives out there had someone to help them in areas where they thought it was no hope. Because, of course, we have many people out there saying, hey, leave him. You don't have to go through that. But there are very little people out there or, or very little amount of people giving wives hope. And even in, you know, we are in a time where, of course, you know, we run to the church when there are issues, right? We run to the church, and the church should be our safety and our comfort because, you know, we are God's people. You know, he is our creator. And we have to have more people out there encouraging wives to fight, not to give up. Yes, I know, of, uh, uh, um, I know about the realities of, you know, today what we're going through, domestic violence, you know, infidelity in the home, you know, uh, physical abuse, verbal abuse. I know and I am well aware of these things. But I was faced with that, and I was able to overcome that. And because I was able to overcome that, I know that others have the ability to do the same thing. And I want to be a beacon or a light, uh, you know, just so that God's glory can be revealed in many of the situations that are deemed dead. Because he is the Lord of the resurrection. He can resurrect the things that are dead. We just have to believe him to do it. And he will do it for us. I am not special. I am only human like many other wives out there. I have, you know, if you cut me, I will bleed red. But we, I believe God, and I believe in the power of God, and I allow him to move in my life. And that, I believe, gives me the passion to help other wives and women to do the same thing. I love that because that's so important, right? And thanks for creating that space to help wives, you know, um, get through different situations and be able to pour into them, right, to create a space mm -hmm. for, you know, like-minded women who are all on that path to pour into each other. So um, why are you so passionate about making sure wives are a private success and not just a public success? That's a good one. Well, here's the thing. Um it's all because we have to realize that we don't have to sacrifice one for the other, but we can have it equally. And there are many successful women out there that are losing their homes because of their drive for success. Success is great, but your family do not have to suffer for it. And I believe that if we have spaces where we can help, you know, successful women, you know, women who have that, you know, to go drive, that, that, that entrepreneurial spirit, that go get it spirit, if we can help them to balance it, if we can help them to balance that energy, focus on business as well as focus your home, on your home, keeping your husband and your, your children, your family as a priority over the business sector, we can have a balance. We could have many people out here 
you know, in Wall Street. We can have them in Hollywood. We can have them, you know, on in mainstream. We can have, you know, the six figure earners out there doing that publicly, the public platform being great while still having a successful home. Why why is it that there are so many great women out there that are losing their homes, losing their families, losing their husbands just because they are successful? Because many people have the anointed, many women have the anointed to make that money. But hello, your family need attention too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's important, right? So thanks for uh, sharing that because you're right. You, you you need to be a private success and a public success. And there's a lot of people that are public success, right? And mm-hmm. it's private and different. And so that's right. which brings me to my which brings me to my next question. Why do you think the divorce rate is so high? I think the divorce rate is so high because people give up too easy. And people don't value their husbands. Society have created a um a vision that husbands are replaceable. You know, if this one don't work out, just go to Walmart. I I'll mind, get another one. If this one doesn't work out, just go down to, you know, uh, Ad Taylor or whatever your favorite store is. Go to the Section 5 and get a new husband. It's just too easy to, or, 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 or people don't value their relationship so much that they're not fighting for it. The divorce rate is high. I mean, we drive to the local store or, or driving past our local community, and it's $99 for a divorce. My God, <laughs> really? Mm. Is that is that how much it costs to get a divorce these days? People are not taking into account the effect of it. There are many people that are selfish. I'm just doing this because oh, I don't want to go through this no more. You know, I I don't deserve this. You know, we are we're thinking too highly of ourselves. You know, the scripture says that we must not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And yes, you do deserve better. Yes, you can have better. But let me tell you something, according to scripture and according to, you know, the God that I serve, although he promised you it, you have to fight for it. We are living in a world where there is a spiritual battle. There is a battle between the flesh or the natural and the spiritual or the supernatural. And this war was going on before the foundation of the world. And because marriage is ordained by God, because it's the blueprint in which the Lord has set the family between a man and a woman, there is always going to be a challenge. There is always going to be a challenge of some sort. It don't always have to be an infidelity. It could be something else. It could be addiction. It could be the lack of respect. It could be anything so this whole thing that if this, does, this marriage doesn't work out, I'm going to divorce and get a next, it's false. It's false hope because guess what? You could go into your second marriage and have trouble again. I've had people come to me on their third marriage. Woman of God, what am I doing wrong? I don't know what's happening. You know, my first husband, he did this and he did that and, you know, I got a you know, I divorced, I got married, and this one he did this, and this one he did that. We're living in a world of sin. Nobody is perfect. The husband's not perfect. The wife is not perfect. What we have to do, we have to learn how to fight for what belongs to us. Our husbands belong to us. We belong to our husbands. You know, we fight for our children all day, every day. We have to value our spouses just as much. I believe if we begin to value each other more, there will be less divorces. If we, if we stop throwing in the towel so easily and always feeling entitled, we will fight more. And guess what? We will have more success and less divorce. So, and I understand that. So I love that, that, that you have shined a light on that. So what is something that they, you know, because you never know who might be listening, right, and saying fight for it, which, is, which, I, which I agree with. But what are some things that you think that are non-negotiables, though? You know, maybe if they're in a domestic violence situation or can we talk more about that? Are you telling them to stay? 
Well, here's my stand, right? Because first of all, um, the foundation of the fight for my marriage was, first of all, being in Christ. And I'm not talking about Bible totally Christian, because we have those out there, those lukewarm, right? Those people that yes. say that they are in Christ, but yet they're still having that one foot in the world, still living a lukewarm life, you know, going to God on a Sunday, going, going to God Easter. No, we're not talking about that. See, I was that Christian at that particular time. I was a youth pastor, and I was a dance minister. And I did not have a relationship with the Lord where I was seeking God for myself, not just eating from the table of my pastor. So while I was that bible totem Christian, I had to seek the Lord for myself. And in seeking the Lord for myself, I learned of the power of God, this power and authority that the Bible talks about. See, many of us, we don't walk in this power and authority. He said that he has given us the power and authority over all the powers of the enemy. So now here it is. You have people who are faced with domestic violence, which, let me make this clear, I have faced domestic violence. I am not telling women to stay in unhealthy situations. I'm not telling them stay in hostile environments. But what I am saying, that does not mean that you have to divorce. See, if we're going to believe God, we have to believe him entirely. We just can't believe that he could sit the Red Sea for Moses, but he can't restore our marriage. We can't believe that he could provide for our, our rent. We can't believe that he could provide you know, us food, but our marriage is too hard for him. See, the Bible declares that with God, all things are possible, and we have to believe that. For me, I had negotiables. I had those barriers that, oh, if my husband cheat on me, I ain't dealing with that. Shoot, my husband not only cheated with me, on me, but he had two extra children. So the thing about it is, if God, who is my creator, is God, this situation is not too hard for him. And if we are going to be in Christ, now I keep saying that if we are going to be in Christ, because I don't want everybody out here thinking that this is possible. I could not have done it apart from Christ. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I could not have done it unless I was totally surrendered to him. You know, the Bible speaks about, you know, the hot and the cold, right? He, he, he prefers us to be either caught or cold, not lukewarm, because if we're lukewarm, he, he would spit us out. So I'm not talking about the lukewarm. I'm talking about you who are hot or cold. If, you, if you're going through troubles in your marriage, then you have to seek God. You have to submit him, and you got to trust him. Because then and only then, I believe your marriage can be restored because these battles out here are real. But like you say, what are the non-negotiables? If you are Christ, there is nothing too hard for him. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what makes your coaching services unique? My coaching services are unique because well, first of all, I do not have, you know, like a, um, what you call a uh, curriculum that I just teach to everybody. I sit with wives on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and I allow the Holy Spirit to lead and I direct me in the way that I should go from them. Because everybody's situation is not the same. Everybody's foundation, um, the foundation of what they're going through is not the same. They, you know, I, I, I'm dealing with, I'm coaching people from all over the world. So, of course, in order for me to truly be a help to them, it's being led by the Spirit of the Lord. I have been called to be a prophet of the Lord, right? And so when you see me coach a woman, I'm dealing with the spiritual as well as the physical. I'm dealing with the natural as well as the, as the supernatural. There has been things that many people who I have coached, they have been dealing with issues for a long time. I've had, I've had women that said, woman of God, I've done counseling for over 12 years. 
And the answers that you have given me in one session, wow. I do not attribute that to me. I attribute that to Holy Spirit. And why are my coaching sessions unique? Because many of the situations that the women are going through, I have walked through. I have been there. I've been in, like you say, the, the, the physical abuse. <laughs> I have been there where my husband was angry. I've been in that place where my husband have, you know, the outside children, and I've dealt with, you know, the baby mom. I've been there. So I believe that because of my first-time experience, not what I've learned in textbooks, not what I've learned on the Internet, but the first-time experience, and walking with Holy Spirit, I'm able to be unique in my coaching. I like that. I like how you explained that, and which is great for our listeners that are listening. So I hope our, you all are getting, taking some good notes and nuggets. So do you think every married woman is a wife? I do believe that every married woman is a wife. Now, question is, are they good wives? <laughs> Yes, you know, the Bible declares what, that he what, what that finds a, a wife, finds a good yeah. thing. You know, what makes them a good wife? Um, first of all, what would make me a good wife wouldn't make necessarily you a good wife. Because why? We're married to two different men. Understanding your spouse, um, being a helper to him, and his uniqueness and walking in the divine purpose that you have been called to makes a woman a good wife. When God created woman for a man, he created her for a divine purpose, to be a helper to the man. As a woman, right, we carry the womb. We carry the, the, the chamber in which a seed grows. A man carries the seed. Right? Now, we're talking naturally now. A man carries the seed, and the woman has the womb in order to make that seed grow. I believe it's the same in the spiritual realm, where God has a divine purpose in which he has placed man on the earth for. But guess what? He needs a woman. You know, we have that word, W-O-M-B, womb, man. And we, we, we break that down to woman because we carry the birthing chamber of the seed. So a woman, a woman's purpose in a man's life is to help him to get into his destined place, what God has called him and created him to be. And together we have that purpose. We have that, um, we have that success. Now here's the thing. Some, of, some women want to be out there doing their own thing, husbands doing their own thing, and everybody doing their own thing. But that's not really what we were created for. We were created to work together as two units working as one. When a man leaves his father and mother, he shall cling to his wife, and the two shall become one. A good wife understands her role and responsibility in her husband's life, and she pulls out of him his God-ordained purpose. Okay. Awesome. 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 So tell us about your new book, Killing and Deliverance, Deliverance for the Broken Wife. Okay. Healing and Deliverance for the Broken Wife was um, a project that Holy Spirit instructed me to do. Now, of course, like, I don't know. I, I can't say I was, I was about to say like many of us, but for me, I did not think that I was qualified to write this book because, you know, when you look at the shelves and you look at the, the books on healing and deliverance, you know, you see all these great men, these great women writing these powerful books on healing and deliverance. I'm like, my God, me? But here is the thing. Many women are going through such trauma in their marriage and, of course, finding that, you know what? If I don't leave this man, I am going to lose it. I'm going to lose myself. I'm going to lose my sanity. You know, I, I just, I, it, it has to be a way of escape. 
But healing and deliverance is a book that teaches lies that earth has no sorrow, heaven cannot heal. And although you're going through the trauma of your marriage, right, although you're going through the hurt and the pain, you can be healed from it. How is it? You know, just, just, just a question that I want to ask the audience, right? Because in your marriage, it's not the only place that you have experienced trauma. But guess what? It's the first place that we quit the exit. Many of us have had trauma in our life as a child. Many had trauma in our lives as a young adult. And guess what? Some of that trauma we bring into our marriage. Uh, some of our marriages are damaged because of the trauma that we brought in our marriage. Healing and deliverance for the broken life caters to the woman that has been broken, either from her marriage or before her marriage. I deal with issues like unforgiveness, you know, how to get past that place of hurting all the time. Because even though some women decide that they want to forgive their husbands. They want to move on. That pain is still ever present and very real. But you don't have to. You don't have to live with that. You don't, you don't have to go through the rest of your marriage just living this. You know, having this bitter taste in your mouth about something that happened 15 years ago. It is possible to move forward from it. The, the, the hurt and the pain that I experienced in my marriage happened over 10 years ago. When people look at me today, they will never, even in conversation, people will never know what I have experienced unless I reveal it. That's the place of healing and deliverance that I believe that God wants us to come to. When Jesus came to the earth, he came with healing in his wings. So if you're out there and you've experienced trauma on any level, hurt on any level in your marriage, before your marriage, you can be healed. Okay. Awesome. So um, I always ask my guests this question because you've created multiple seats at the table for yourself. How did you create your seat at the table? Um, I did not create it. A seat at the table. The the Lord did for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that I was just a willing vessel. Um, to, you know, really and truly, I'm not interested in creating a seat at the table. I'm just interested in being a vessel that God can use. And wherever God wants to take me, that's what He's doing. Um, I decided that I made a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if you take care of my family, you take care of my children, you take you, you, my family belongs to you. I will be a vessel that you can use. And making this vow with the Lord, the Lord has pushed me out into even going out there to tell my story. When initially, when he said to do this, first of all, what story? Who wants to hear it? You know, that, that's the mindset that I had. But broadcasting over the, the airwaves, over the Internet, my voice has gone through hundreds of homes and to people I never, ever would have even tried to reach. And he and th- my husband say thousands, thousands of people that I never, ever would have reached. I never would have stepped out and be a coach have not been for the Holy Spirit. So he is the one who has created for me a seat at the table, and I am just a humble servant, and I give him all the glory. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love that. It's so important that we always give him the glory. So what can we expect from you the rest of 2020? We're in a new year and a new decade. What can we expect from you? Um, one thing that you can expect from me, um, well, I, I just launched my T-shirt, um, my T-shirt that said, I am a fighter when wives fight, families win. And I'm really, really pushing the message of that just to let wives know that the ball is in your court. No matter what you're going through, 
If you're a fighter, you're going to win this battle. And not just the, ba- the battle in your marriage, but the battle in your business, the battle in your children, in your community. Wherever you are, if you fight, you're going to win. Um, also, I'm, you know, just getting into my uh, YouTube, I'm really focusing on that, um, really gathering and, and getting wise together, um, building them up in the spirit of God, uh, causing them to be grounded, yielded to the Lord, and uplifting them. And, of course, my coaching, my coaching, of course, my coaching, Empowering Wives Coaching, that is just it's skyrocketed. It's going awesome. I'm also going to be doing a lot of teaching through my courses. I'm going to be offering courses to wives. They're like small courses, uh, uh, smaller versions of my coaching sessions. Like if someone just wants like a deeper teaching on prayer, I'm going to offer things like that. One thing, though, that I am going to be really, really pushing is my premarital course. I have a premarital course called Before the Covenant. And I, this is something that has really been on my heart because there are so many marriages that can be bad marriages or troubled marriages that can be avoided on certain levels. Now, although I said all marriages are going to face trials, let me tell you something. Some people get themselves in trouble and they're entering into marriages that just unwise. So I am going to be really, really teaching um, women who are about to enter into marriage about, you know, before the covenant. And that already is live on my website. Okay. Awesome. So congratulations on all of the great things that you have coming up and all the things that I know you're going to birth in this new year, Metoria. So would you please mm-hmm. tell our listeners how they can follow you and support you on all social media outlets? All right. Well, if you want to follow me, you can definitely connect with me on Facebook. Um, my Facebook or Meltoria, Prophet Meltoria Woodside. Um, my name is M E L T O R I A, Meltoria Woodside on Facebook. I'm on YouTube, Meltoria Woodside or Meltoria W. Also on um, Instagram. All my social handles are Meltoria Woodside or Meltoria W. And of course, they could connect with me through empoweringwise.com. All right, so make sure you connect with Meltoria and follow her and book her. So thank you, Meltoria, for taking the time out of your very busy schedule for coming to the table tonight. And I look forward to inviting you back. Well, thank you, Ashley, for having me. Like I say, it was su- it's such an honor and a privilege. May the Lord bless you and all your other um, guests that come after me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So thank you again. So I would like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, from Tennessee State University, and my intern, Ontario from Winston Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship.